So good morning, boys and girls. Today we are going to have our SAD activity for the month. And you've been doing some activities in your classroom all school year. And today we have special visitors coming. And they're going to talk to you about what the police department does to help us avoid destructive decisions or when they have to intervene maybe when people do choose to make destructive decisions. So this morning we'll be really quiet and attentive and I think you can see some exciting things. Who likes dogs? Please show your attention and your respect to our guests this morning. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Good. Okay. My name is Deputy Kirker. I'm with the Sheriff's Office. This is Craig Hines with the Amelia Police Department. We're both K-9 Patrol Officers. We work every day pretty much with our dogs. Um, there's a lot of different type dogs. Ours are patrol, narcotic dogs, drug dogs basically. Um, I've had my dog for two years. His name is Pike. He's a German Shepherd. Uh, Craig had his dog for two years. His, his is a Belgian mountain dog. Um, our dogs track. We have track. Our dogs are certified by the state of Ohio for narcotics, tracking, and patrol work. Basically, patrol work is uh, light stuff. So if that guy runs, hurts somebody, then we use our dogs. That. We can also track new kids. I have two kids at home, 13 and 11 year old boys. They go set tracks for me all the time. And I'll sit and I'll take them track and go find them and they give them a reward and play with them. So our dogs are social dogs. However, we don't let strangers around our dogs because of the possibility of someone getting bit or hurt by them. Uh, we, I work mostly this area down here in Richmond, mostly a little bit of Bethel, so a lot of you guys have probably seen me around with my dog. Our dogs live at home with us, we take our dogs home, they stay at home. Mine plays with my kids, my kids, you know, can do things with them, they take them out the other day when it snows. My youngest boy went out and made snowballs and grow and they played and had a lot of fun. We, uh, at the sheriff's office, we had three control dogs and one bloodhound. The bloodhound is, his only use is for tracking people. It's the only thing he can do is track people. Where ours are versatile dogs, they can do pretty much whatever he wants to do. Some of the equipment that we use every day, these are bulletproof vests, four hour balls that they have to wear. You guys can pass it around, see how heavy it is. My dog is a, my dog is almost 100 pounds. He's a very, he's a very big dog. Very strong, powerful dog. So tracking with him is pretty easy because I just hold on to the line and drag him wherever he wants to go. Some of the other stuff that, that we use, we have bike suits, we have bike sleeves. This is a bike sleeve. You guys will get to see that in a little bit. We put this on. The dog, when we're training, we put this all on and let the dog come up and bite our arm. It keeps them in practice. In case we do have to use it, you guys can, you guys can see it. Um, anybody have any questions? Yes, sir? Do I have a vest? I have a vest, yes. I don't have it on right now because I don't want to get too hot in here with you guys, but yes, I have a vest. Yes, ma'am? You know my number? You do? 
It is very good. That is. You're exactly right. Yes, sir. Why do I have a gun? That's a good question. I don't know one that I said. Yes. Because bad guys have guns, so we have to carry them too. Unfortunately. That's, that's actually, that's not a phone, that's a collar for my dog. Do I eat donuts? I do not eat donuts. I might look like it, but I don't. Yeah. My dog is 90 kilos. So he's a very. He's, we'll see him in a minute. He's pretty big. Frank's dog, I think, is 65, 60 pounds. So he's a little bit smaller, a little thinner than my dog. My dog is a very, very big dog. Yeah. My dog, yeah, my dog is actually. My dog's name is Pike. Uh, Pike was shipped here about two and a half years ago from Holland. And he speaks, he speaks in Dutch. He doesn't, he doesn't speak English language. So you can't tell him to sit down and go sit down. And the reason we do that is we don't want the bad guys to be able to tell our dogs what to do and what not to do. So we train them in different languages, like Dutch, Czech, Czech German, yes. Do they climb trees? They can't climb trees, yes. When we train, we put people in trees to, to get them to jump up to the trees to try to get them to the back. So they can somewhat climb trees. Yeah. You watch that on TV? Yeah, I haven't seen on TV yet. Yeah. yeah. You watch the news? I don't know if that's good or bad. Shepherd yes. uh. dog? Yeah, mine is. You love shepherd dogs? I do too. They're very, very smart. Yeah. Okay, Tracker. 
However, power dogs up to about two, two to three hours, depending on the weather, power dogs, I mean, both of our dogs are excellent trackers. My dog absolutely loves the track. That's, that's his big thing. His track loves the track. We have a question from the back. I can't hear it. He wants to know if you had multiple dogs at one time. I, I have not. Craig, however, has several dogs at his house. He's, this is his third patrol dog that he's had, so I have I grew up with police dogs pretty much all my life, but the one I have now is my only dog, other than a lot wilder than I have, but I no longer have yet. Normally, working the road, we have five, six people working the road, and then of course we have a bunch of other stuff like investigators, administration, uh, evidence tech, stuff like that. So, but working the road, we have normally five, six people working the road. Yep, we have a report. Okay, we have another question from the back. How often do you use the fighting scene? Now often we train every other week. We train for eight hours. And then every Wednesday we do something. We either train or it's care and maintenance for the dog or we clean our car, wash the dog, wash her den, you know, take her to the bed, that kind of stuff. So every Wednesday we're doing something. Okay, we have That's a taser. Well, if you take off running, I'll let him chase you and you can come <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how fast he is. Dogs are very fast. Probably 18 to 20 miles an hour. As many as you put in, so. We're going to do two more questions. Which dog do you use the most? Which dog do we use the most? As far as, like, the patrol dog and the blood dog? The patrol dogs. The patrol dogs are out on the road patrolling with us every day. When we work the blood down on the heat station, it's still at home until he's needed, and then they keep the uh, handler. Somebody die or go to his house, get the dog, and go to wherever it is. And the reason for that is because the blood down can track for hours and hours longer than we can, our dog can, so he doesn't normally control with the dog. <coughs> Twice a day, once in the morning, once at night. He doesn't get any treats, he doesn't get any goodies and stuff like that. All right, girls. I don't know if this is on. There we go. Uh, we're going to let the officers now continue on with the presentation. And I know you have a lot of good questions, but there's about 450 of us in here, and we can't ask every question. But that might be something you can think about and ask your teacher, and they can probably answer a few of those questions for you that I was walking around the room and getting from you. Okay? So we're going to be really quiet and then we'll see what they have to say and watch what happens. Okay, what we have up here are training boxes. We call them training boxes. There's four boxes and you can use as many as you want. What we do is we take these boxes and as you can see they're all the same size, they're all the same color, everything is exactly the same. One. What we do, as you just saw, one of them we put a tennis ball in. And it has a little uh, plunger that when we hit a button, it pops the ball up out of there. So we take whichever one, like that one on the end, we'll take it, put some uh, narcotics, we'll put some training drugs in it. So, so our dogs have to tell us which box the drugs are in. 
until the snap each one of them. You'll see it when he comes in, he'll snip the first three of them and move on as if nothing's there. And then on the last one, he'll set down. That's telling us as a handler that he smelled the odor of narcotics in or around that box. And then once he does what he's supposed to do, like sit down, we'll hit the, uh, we'll hit the remote and the ball will pop up out of it that gets them all excited. And it makes it fun training for them that way, so that the ball is a little bit of a surprise, so they jump and, and uh, get them all excited about the drug work. Some of, sometimes we will take, like I have a, I have a rubber ball that I carry with me, so like if I'm doing a track for a small kid or something like that, looking for anything, I'll give this to him because obviously we don't want to be fighting small kids and stuff. So what I'll do, instead of rewarding him with food or anything like that, I'll reward him with this rubber ball to let them know that you're doing a good job by finding whoever it is we were looking for. See how he's checking the boxes? Now he's, see he's sitting down, he's scratching at the box, he's telling his handler that there's something in that box that he wants. See, that gets the dog excited when he gets the ball pops up and it surprises him and it makes it fun training for the dog. And we can do this pretty much with any of the boxes. We can move them around, we can put them inside cars, we can take them the little piston inside of it, we can take it off and hit it like in uh, the compartments for motors and cars and stuff to make them actually pinpoint where that odor of narcotic is coming from. Anybody else have a question while we're going over there? Yep.
often break it down a little bit further. He can smell everything in the pizza. And they, if you, a lot of trainers go off just two of them. So they can smell the peas, the carrots, they'll bring it down to everything. So say if you try to hide something in your car and you want to put all these other odors in the car, the dog can see through all those odors and break it down for us. So he's not hitting on food. These dogs don't get, like, you know, sometimes you feed your dog table scraps or, you know, you get a little extra treat. These dogs, all they want is that tennis ball or a ball. That's all they care about. All the time I go through a drive through and that skyline and stuff, and they ask the gator wants a, a hot dog or something. He won't take it. I can put it through the cage, and he just won't take it. He just doesn't like human food. He's all about playing and doing the tennis ball and all that stuff. So that's how their, their sense of smell is a lot better than ours. So if we put it in this room and just let him off the knee, he would work all the way until he found that odor because he wants that tennis ball.
question if I didn't hear her. I was just saying that if they were to fight someone's arm without protecting sleep, they could break someone's arm very easily. Oh, it was definitely easy. Well, an open heart dog can actually go to sleep in heaven. So they, their, their bite is very, very powerful. We train a lot for that reason with sleeves and stuff like that. Because, I mean, if you have to ever be in that situation, you want that dog to bite and stay on that person until you're able to get to it. Otherwise, they just bite the guy, the dog lets go, the guy just keeps walking. So in our training, they bite, they hold on, they stay there until we take them off. Whether we have to take them off by hand or we command them off. They stay there, they stay on it until we take them off. Leave us Work drive. 
to where a lot of dogs around here are kind of, unfortunately, kind of lazy and don't really want to work on They will bite you. A lot of dogs around here will bite you, but they'll bite you and let go and move on to something else to where our dogs have that drive and in fact they just keep pushing forward. All right, boys and girls, if you have any more questions, I want to encourage you to write your questions down, and maybe if you write a thank you letter with your boss, you can include some of those questions, because they can't get to everyone's today. So some of the questions you asked were really, really good, and keep those up. If you have more questions, you can write them down. Thank you. I want to thank the officers for coming today, so how are we going to thank them? Thank you for having us. Anytime you guys want us to come down and do something, we prefer a spring summer if we can be outside and you know, a little more active for the dogs, most of the dogs get inside the kids and go down their body and build up because they're inside and they know when they're in and things like this. So it's not that we don't do it, we can do it now, but it's just we can put a lot more things we can do outside. Can you make it come back? And yeah, we may get to see them again. So again, give them one more thank you with our hands, and then you can look at your teacher to see what it is you're supposed to do.